All right, hello, I'm Rob Williams. I'm the Executive Director of the Aerospace Center for Excellence here on the Sun and Fun Expo Campus in Lakeland, Florida. We're coming to you today from the Lakeland Pig Fest on our lovely Expo Campus out here today. So you're standing inside Aerospace Discovery at the Florida Air Museum. This is the official aviation and aviation education museum of the state of Florida. What a lot of folks don't know is this is much, much more. In fact, this is one of the 12 buildings that make up the Aerospace Center for Excellence. ACE is year-round educational programming which is benefited by the Sun and Fun Fly-In. So Sun and Fun, as you may know, happens every April. It's the largest fly-in in the southeast with over 200,000 people from over 70 countries descend on wonderful Lakeland, Florida. This turns into the busiest airport in the world for aircraft movements that week. What people do not know is that it's a fundraiser. Yes, that's all right, a fundraiser for year-round programs on the ACE campus. So we have over $2.1 million towards educational philanthropic efforts throughout the year. And over, of that $2.1 million, over 400000 almost a half a million dollars, that's right, is given annually, annually, annually towards scholarships for young men and women to pursue aerospace careers, whether it be for scholarships to learn to fly, scholarships to become engineers, or continuing education with our partners at Travis Career Center and Polk State College. We have it all here. So some of the buildings we will visit later are the Piedmont Aerospace Experience. It's a working Boeing 727 classroom, which our students utilize, and it also has a meeting room in the back. We have the Bueller Aerospace Skills Restoration Center, where our volunteers and students work on restoring aircrafts. We have the Lakeland Aero Club, and we also have a lot of unique aircraft you won't find anywhere else. So Come join me as we learn more about our museum and about the ACE campus. One of the buildings at the Aerospace Center for Excellence campus is the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. It's a Polk County Academy school. So what does that mean? Well, those young men and women attending that school, it's a public high school, and they graduate from Kathleen High School here in Polk County, but they have a focused aerospace curriculum. So those folks that go in there are looking to go on to further aerospace careers as pilots, mechanics, engineers. We have a 100% graduation rate there at the school. We have a scholarship program to teach those folks to fly. And we also have only one of three schools in the United States that's certified to administer the FAA airframe and power plant examination. So they can come out and learn to fly, learn to be employable right off the bat. We also have the one-of-a-kind, unique UAV or drone club here. It's the only drone club to operate on airport property in the United States, fully sanctioned through the Academy of Model Aeronautics. So as you can see here, we're being all-encompassing from our pilots, mechanics, flight engineers, 
it, it, operations professionals. If you want it, you have it to, to succeed here at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. Contact information for us would be www.flysnf, that's Sierra November Foxtrot.org, O R G. And the org is because we're a 501c3 not for profit. Please remember. Absolutely. You can come on our website and make contributions there. You can come here in person, see everything that's going on. We always have a need for philanthropic efforts throughout the year. The need is never enough. Our summer camp programs, if you'd like to sponsor young men or women attending our scholarship, our, our summer camps, that's ages 7 to 18 there. That's where they get their first taste of aviation. Maybe you say, I'd like to just support some fuel for somebody to go out and fly. We can always use fuel as a support or anything that might be for the greater need. We always need roofs, and so roofs are always in need of repair, but they're not always at someone's forethought, but our infrastructure is also always in need of help also here. Stick them in, yeah, tight them in there. Let me know, do you have any little spots you need me to touch up? We got time. Dave, let me get back in oh, real quick. I'm not. No, no, come out this way. Go, go, <laughs> go. You got them wet paper towels right there? I see that. That's good, yeah, keep going. Right now, this is crunch time, honey. Actually, Give me that bottle of water. Where's your bottle? That bottle of water. Put your head there. Jam them in there. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first entry uh, I thought was excellent. Good bite through, uh, good flavor on the sauce, uh, excellent piece of uh, chicken. The second entry, um, I, I almost question how it was cooked because you look at, and I don't know why they didn't, you know, put sauce all the way down to the end. Uh, I guess to, but the sauce to me tasted like uh, too much uh, tomato sauce or too much ketchup in it, and I, I didn't care for the sauce at all. The, the meat was a little rubbery, and so I didn't care for that one. Uh, number three was the same thing. That was almost uh, undercooked. Um, there, there, I had to squeeze it a couple times to get that clear juice out, but did not care for the flavor nor uh, the tenderness. Number four is another uh, home run. Uh, it was excellent bite, nice, clean, loved the sauce. Um, it was a good piece of chicken. 
and then the last one again kind of let me down um, it wasn't all that uh, uh, like I say prepared but it was kind of the run of the mill um, and that's all I have I like the number one was my favorite one I liked um, it was very tender and very flavorful and uh, my least favorite one was number two um, it was a little too spicy and I didn't um, feel it was cooked as well I found number one to be the best of the uh, the entries I like the bite on it I like the taste especially but uh, quite honestly two three and four uh, didn't come up to snuff for me and the last one probably was the the least uh, that I liked of the lot it had too much of a peppery uh, taste to it uh, some of which still is staying with me so uh, that's how I felt thank you number four was my best one that I liked it had a nice flavor smoke flavor to it number one the sauce on it tasted almost like it was tomato paste a little tough. Well, I'll tell you what, the one I liked the best turns out nobody else liked. That was number five. And it had a good bite through, it's well cooked, uh, it wasn't over spiced, it didn't overwhelm the, the chicken. Um, the one I liked, at least liked was number two. Um, yeah, it was, kind of, it was described as rubbery and I, I agree with that. The bite through was crummy. But, but that's, you know, just an opinion. Yeah. The one that I liked the best by far was number one. Good bite through, good flavor, just a, a well-cooked piece of chicken. I think number two, a little strange appearance look, but also way too much rosemary. That was the overpowering and only flavor I could get out of it. Um, number four was good, but I think it was over-injected. And when I took a bite, juice just sprayed out all over the place. Number one was a beautiful rib, uh, the tenderness was uh, very good, and the taste was uh, excellent. The, the, the number two uh, I liked, but it was a little overcooked. Number three, uh, the tenderness was fine, but the taste was very unusual as, as well as number four, the taste was very unusual. Number four uh, had parts of it that were cooked well, but then other parts of it w were very tough. And then number five had an uh, unbelievably good uh, taste, uh, but it was overcooked. My favorite was number three. It had uh, good flavor. Uh, the bite was clean. The tenderness and the texture was very good. I guess my least favorite would have been number four. It was overcooked and the either brown sugar or molasses, the sweetness was overpowering on the on the taste. My favorite was um, number four. I thought it was real good. It was, it was cooked good. It had, had parts in it that was a little overcooked, but most of all, that was a good one. The, the first one was, was um, cooked perfect. I liked it. The number three was was also cooked good, but it had, um, it, in mine, lacked flavor. It had a lot of rub and sauce, but it just didn't have a lot of flavor. The number five was slightly overcooked, but it also was um, very tasty, good. So num number four was the best for me. My favorite was number five, followed closely by number one. Five, I thought, had a really good taste. Uh, juicy and kind of a sweet taste. It was overcooked though. My least favorite was a tie between three, two and three. 
They were both way overcooked and dry. Number two had a very odd flavor. Uh, I, the other ones were, four was okay, it was overcooked and dry, but it had a really good taste. I guess uh, my favorite would have been number four. Um, number one, I thought, had an odd texture to it. It was um, just a little bit firm in the bite. Um, number five was a little bit overdone, but really nice. Um, four, just a little bit overdone, but uh, on a whole. Um, uh, two and, and three um, were not my favorites at all. Thanks. My favorite was number one. It had a nice cherry pepper sauce to it, and it didn't overdo the meat. The meat was tender, and as soon as I took a bite, the bone turned white just like it should. My least favorite was number three. It was very dry and tough. The other three were just average ribs. My wife is really good at that. That's her job. Ah. I figured it was you. <laughs> Since you're the OC one. What's that? Putting uh, luggage in a car to go on a vacation or a trip. Luggage? Like putting meat in a box? Oh. It's like playing Tetris? Pretty much. That's why he does it. I throw everything in the Walmart sack in front of the back seat. <laughs> Barbecue's a visual thing. It is. It's like that guy told me earlier. I said, you can film as much as you want. Because your team looks professional. Like, you know, a lot of guys just wearing t-shirts and kind of meant a lot to me. I'm like, oh, we did something right. Uh, number one, I thought had a good taste, a uh, good flavor, a little bit on the dry side, which is kind of a common thread on this uh, plate. Uh, number two was also a little dry and had a lot of smoke flavor. Uh, probably too much smoke, maybe that helped on the dryness. Um, number three uh, started to lose some on the flavor. I'm not sure if they're what their profile was, but. Um, it didn't really complement the meat that much. Uh, the, the fourth one was kind of stringy, uh, a little hard to chew, chew than some of the other ones. And number five uh, uh, was was good and moist and tender, but again, the uh, uh, flavor profile didn't complement the meat very well. Uh, number one was uh flavorful although it did have a big piece of fat in it but it went down uh, number two uh, was I believe well presented uh, and the flavor you know I got the flavor of the meat and I enjoyed that uh, as I did with number three uh, number four was plain in its presentation, uh, but uh, had some flavor to it. I don't use the term plain in a derogatory sense, uh, but uh, you know, it just tasted like pulled pork. Uh, number five uh, presented very well, uh, a little over on the additional flavoring, very tender. Uh, a good piece of meat. Number one was uh, a good presentation. Wasn't as tender as it could have been. Number two, in my opinion, was a tad bit dry and non-flavorable. Uh, number three uh, was stringy. Though it was moist, it, it needed a little bit more flavor. Uh, number four was okay, it wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it was okay. And number five, to me, 
was the better one uh, presentation. I liked the presentation of the Money Muscle. Uh, it was a little bit sweet, but not overpowering. Number one, uh, I thought it was a little dry. Uh, I couldn't pick up much of a flavor. Number two, I thought it was very mushy. Uh, it, it lost some flavor also. Number three, extremely overcooked, dry, no juice whatsoever. Number four, uh, it was really stringy and the way it was presented, you really didn't get a good taste of the whole meat. And number five was, I think, the best of the group, but it was a little, a, a, a little overdone. I found number one to be uh, rather tasty, but it was a little bit on the tough side. Number two, uh, it was very bland, it was dry. The bark was uh, burnt instead of smoky. Number three was kind of mushy and uh, too salty for my taste. Number four and five were, um, were pretty much tied. They were both fairly tasty. They missed just a little bit on the tenderness. Number one, I found to be a bit bland and tough. Number two was on the bland side, as well as a bit mushy. Number three was on the brink of being mushy, but other than that, tasted pretty good. Number four was a bit too sweet and quite mushy. And number five, to me, was very tasty and the flavor was spot on. Fernand's ready? Right there. Oh, cool. I didn't even see him bring him in. Oh, that's okay. But other than not being all overdone, now that I'm actually tasting it, I think we're good with this. I, I think I did, didn't put enough salt on it, but...
in the category of brisket today, I found number two to be uh, nice and tender and a nice flavor to it. All right, and uh, the category brisket, I found also number two to be the, the best of the ones I've tasted in terms of um, both appearance, taste, and tenderness. Which was your least favorite? Of My least favorite? Wow. I had two least favorites. It was number one and number three. Because? Because number one felt like it was overcooked. I tasted as though it was overcooked and too soft and a little mushy. And number three, I, it just tasteless and, and tough. Okay. Category brisket, I... I my sentiments echo the ones you just heard. Number one and three were the least favorite. Again, one was overcooked, uh, put in the box with no garnish, just chopped brisket. And uh, number three was cut with the grain, so you're going to get toughness in the look and flavor were subpar as well. Uh, I think number two was my favorite. Uh, most tender, had the good pull, pull apart test, and uh, the burn in was really good. Category brisket and um, same thing on the on the one I didn't like as much was one and three uh, same reason tough uh, number three bland uh, the one I liked the most was number five it was juicy and had a sweet taste to it one that I did enjoy I'll concur with number one as being my least favorite did not appreciate the taste of it the the texture of it. Yeah basically taste less and I would pick number two as my favorite on the plate uh, had a good texture uh, had a good taste to it had more of a briskety beefy taste than the other entries today uh, category brisket number two was by far my favorite uh, had a great beef flavor along with good seasoning and a nice smoky flavor uh, one was my least favorite is very dry and tough and uh, Number five was pretty good.